If you go to Robinhood on desktop, on a Tesla call option chain, for example, you will see this pill-shaped UI elements detailing the current stock price of Tesla, the share price. Any call option contract below this UI element, this line, these are all in the money Tesla call option contract. Meaning on the opposite side, anything above this line is out of the money Tesla call options. Interestingly, for puts, it's flipped, it's reversed. Anything above the price UI element, above the line, is in the money. Anything below it is out of the money puts. Does that seem odd and confusing? Complicated maybe? Well, they are and they can be. To be honest, that's because you don't understand what they mean yet. That's exactly why I'm here today. Because in this video, I'm going to use my design skills to help simplify in the money, at the money, and out of the money what they are, what do they imply, what are some common patterns, how do they relate to some of other common option trading terms like intrinsic value or delta and other option Greeks. A lot of good stuff there. By the end of this video, you should have a very holistic view of in the money, at the money, and out of money. Use that lingo very fluently. More importantly, you can make more informed decision when trading options. Ready to learn a bit more and become a pro in option trading? Let's begin. <music> Good morning everyone, my name is Justin, I'm a designer and working in Silicon Valley. I'm here today to use design to explain in the money, at the money, and out of the money. If you look at all these from a high level view, these are the three possible cases an option contract can be at any point from the moment that it's listed to its expiration. What determines this state or the moneyness of an option contract is two things, only two things, the option strike price and the underlying stock price. So this is actually extremely straightforward. Because we know the strike price of an option contract is always fixed. If I buy a 900 strike Tesla call, my call will have a strike price of a 900. It's not going to change. What's going to change is the stock price, the share price, the underlying stock of Tesla. During market hour on Robinhood, the only thing that changes is this price pill, this line moving up and down. As it moves, the option contract could go from in the money to out of the money or vice versa. Therefore, let's say I buy a call. After I press the buy button, the stock price will ultimately determine whether my call is in the money, out of the money, or at the money. Now you get the gist of an option contract and its moneyness. We can get to the more nitty gritty details on what it means and why I think this is a very, very important concept in option trading. If you're new to this channel, just so you know, you don't have to smash the like button just yet. Do that in the end if you find this video useful or insightful. Hold me accountable. Now without further ado, let's dive right into the details. I will start with calls first. In the money means the strike price of a call option contract is lower than the current stock price. In the money is a good thing for buyers. When I buy a call, I absolutely want my call to be in the money. So you can establish that connection. In the money is good for buyers. In the money is good for buyers. At the money means the strike price of that call option contract is the same or very, very close to the current stock price. For simplicity, you can just think of it as the strike price right above or below the line depend on which strike price is closer to the stock price, the share price. At the money to me is it's kind of iffy because it gives a lot of uncertainty because it could swing to in the money or out of money the next second. Lots of uncertainty. So at the money is anxious for buyers. Out of the money means the strike price of a call option contract is above the current share price. If I buy a call, I don't want my call to be out of the money. Some people do like that because it's cheap to buy and I will go more into detail on that later in this video. That's for calls, for puts, it's flipped. In the money puts are the ones with strike price above the line, above the current price. At the money, same as the call ones, very, very close to the line out of the money puts are the ones below the current price. Now let's take a look at why. It's actually not that complicated, let me break it down for you. If I buy a 900 strike Tesla call, by definition I can exercise it and buy 100 shares of Tesla at $900 per share instead of the market price of $942 per share. If you don't understand this, check out the video that I made earlier, link in the corner and description down below. It makes sense for me to exercise because I can buy the shares at a lower price. It's good for me as a buyer. You can notice this 900 Tesla call is below the line 
so it's in the money. That's why in the money calls are good for option buyers. A 935 strike call is out of the money. It's not good for buyers because I can buy Tesla shares from the market already at 924 per share. Then why would I want to exercise the 935 call to buy 100 shares at 935? I don't want to buy high. I don't want to pay more than I could. It does not make sense to exercise out of the money calls. That's why out of the money calls are bad for buyers. On the other hand, when I buy a put option contract, I can exercise the put to sell 100 shares at the strike price, then buy 100 shares back to cover the position from the market. Again, my buy put 101 video is in the corner and description down below if you need to refresh your memory of how puts work. In this example, 940 put is above the line. That means it's in the money. If I buy this 940 Tesla put and exercise it, I can sell 100 shares of Tesla stock at 940 per share and then right away buy 100 shares back from the market at 924. I sell first and buy back to cover the position. If you are selling Tesla shares, you want to sell high, right? A put option contract with a high strike price will allow you to do exactly that. Allow you to sell the underlying share at the higher price than the current market stock price. It makes sense for me to exercise in the money puts. That's why in the money for puts, it's above the line. That explains why in the money and out of the money direction is flipped for calls and puts. It all comes down to whether it makes sense to exercise. Now let's look at why does it matter. Simply put, it matters because when you buy an option contract, depending on where the money is falls on the expiration date, the value of your contract can be day and night. To be specific, at expiration, an in the money contract has value, it's worth some money. I can exercise it or I can sell this in the money contract back to the market. And at the money contract has some value too. But it's very uncertain. It depends on where exactly the stock price ends. I personally will not try to aim to have my contract land at the money. And out of the money contract at expiration has zero value. Out of money contracts are worthless at expiration. I don't want that. So why would an in the money option contract have value at expiration? but then out of the money doesn't. This actually ties back to the same fundamental principle, whether it makes sense to exercise it or not. If I bought a 900 strike Tesla put and hold it all the way to expiration and the Tesla stock ends up above $900 per share, above my strike price, let's just say it ends at 910 at expiration. My $900 put will expire out of the money. At that point, it would not make sense for me to exercise that put anymore because selling at a strike of $900 per share is not higher than the market price of $910. That means my $900 put is now useless. It's so useless that nobody will want this $900 put. Nobody wants to pay anything for such a useless option contract at expiration. That's why it's worth $0. I lost $5K. Therefore, when it makes sense to exercise at expiration, like the last minute when it expires. It has value, but if it doesn't make sense, then it does not have value at that point anymore. It's worth zero dollar. The value of a contract I'm talking about here is the sum of both intrinsic and extrinsic value. They change based on whether the option contract is in the money, at the money, or out of the money, and how much time is left before it expires. I will further break down intrinsic and extrinsic value in the next video. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Back to the subject, as long as I'm a buyer, whether it's buying calls or puts, having my contract in the money guarantees that it has value and also gives me the chance, the highest chance of making a profit. However, here comes the tricky part. When you buy in the money, it does not guarantee that at expiration, it will stay in the money. When you buy out of the money, it doesn't mean it will always stay out of the money either. While you are holding the contract, it can start in the money, but then it goes out of money and maybe ends up back in the money again. It's like a free range chicken that you have no control of where it's gonna go. There's a range of possibilities. All you can control is the starting point, the moment that you buy it. Well, what can you really do? Well, that's a perfect segue to the next part. What are some common patterns? 
What are some implications? What are something that you can leverage to potentially help you profit better? Well, since we know as buyers, we want our option contracts to be in the money, and there are certainly some common patterns we can look out for. Pattern one, delta and the moneyness. In the option Greeks for each contract, there's a Greek called delta. If you don't know what that is, I already have a video for it, link in the corner and description down below. Generally speaking, the higher the delta is, the more in the money, that option contract is when you buy it. It also signals that it's more likely that it will stay in the money throughout and be in the money at expiration, which is exactly what I want as a buyer. For puts, you can ignore the minus sign, just look at the number value of delta. The 880 strike put has a delta of negative 0.627. The 885 strike put has a delta of negative 0.06555. Drop the minus sign for both. 0.6555 is a bigger number than 0.627. And therefore, the 855 strike put is more in the money than the 850 strike put. There's also a metric called probability in the money, which tells you that the probability of this option expires in the money at that point in time. This is exactly what I'm looking for, right? The higher, the better for me as an option buyer, as it means higher chance of profit. This has a correlation to delta actually, meaning a higher delta tends to have a higher probability in the money. They are not the same thing, I have to emphasize they are not the same thing, they just happen to have a similar mathematical formula under the hood. That is still a very good reference point for those who use Robinhood, because unfortunately, they don't show probability in the money on Robinhood. If we buy a really deep in the money call, it will have a really, really high delta. That means it's very, very likely that it will stay in the money throughout and expire in the money, which is a good thing. This means if I buy a deep in the money call, it's more likely for me to profit. However, it's too good, too simple to be real, right? Well, that's a perfect build up to the next pattern. Pattern number two, price and the moneyness. Just click around on Robinhood in this Tesla call, for example, you will notice the deeper it is in the money, the more expensive the call price is, the more you have to pay for to buy this call. This is a very straightforward pattern, right? I can pay more for a higher likelihood to win, and because it's so likely for me to win, the profit, the percentage of gain will be smaller. Or I can pay a lot less for a smaller chance of winning and get a higher percentage of gain. The current price of Tesla stock is 850.50. A 1050 strike, way out of money call, it's only 20 bucks, it's so cheap. The trade off is that it will less likely end up in the money. Because the Tesla stock, we need to go from 850, 50 to past 1050 for it to be in the money. The stock needs to go up 24% next week for it to happen. It's possible, but how probable? That's the question. Yet, if that happens, you can easily have a double, triple, quadruple percentage of gain. Pattern number three, theta and moneyness. There's another Greek called theta, which tells us how much value an option contract will decrease every day if its underlying stock stays flat. It's the biggest enemy for option buyers. Well, so we can look at Robinhood, right? We can click around, we can look at Tesla call. The current share price is A5050, and A50 at the money call has a theta of negative 3.3. That means every day, this A50 call option contract is gonna lose $330 every day if Tesla, the underlying stock, stays flat. Or we can look at another one. We go all the way up, way out of money. A 930 Tesla call, it has a theta of negative 1.73. So every day if the Tesla stock stays flat, it's gonna lose $173. Or we can go deeper in the money. We look at the 800 Tesla call, theta of negative 2.61. That means this 800 strike Tesla call is gonna lose $261 if the Tesla stock, the underlying stock stays flat. Well, that tells us theta decay is low when it's in the money. The deeper it is in the money, the smaller. It gets to the highest when it's at the money. And then low again when it's out of money, very low when it's very out of money. Pattern four, gamma and moneyness. Gamma has an indirect effect on the option price. Again, I have a video for that, link in the corner and description down below. At any given time, if a stock option contract is at the money, gamma is always the highest. We can look at Robinhood again for at the money, A50 Tesla call has a gamma of point 006. If we go out of the money, 1030 Tesla call has a gamma of 0.0005. It gets a lot smaller. 
or we can go down we can go deeper in the money maybe this 760 call there's a gamma of 0.002 smaller than a gamma from the 850 at the money call you can clearly see as soon as the strike price goes away from the share price gamma decreases this is pretty straightforward if you put this next to theta they actually have the exact same pattern all right guys we have covered quite a ton today thanks for sticking with me if i were to leave you one screen of content as a takeaway this is what i have for you as option contract buyers call buyers or put buyers you always want to be in the money you want to stay in the money as long as possible you want to expire in the money you want out of the money to turn into in the money at expiration that's how the buyers will win for option contract sellers call sellers or put sellers you want it to be out of the money you want it to stay out of the money as long as possible you want it to expire out of the money you want any in the money contract that you sell to become to turn into out of the money when it expires that's when the sellers will win. The constant dynamic, the push and pull, the hope and the desire is what maintains the equilibrium in the option market. So keep learning, make good judgment with design thinking and have fun trading options. There are more related topics I plan to do in future videos. If you have a strong preference of which one you want to see first, simply let me know in the comment section down below. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you have learned what you wanted, well, congratulations and hope I earned a big like from you for this video. If you like free money and don't mind just two minutes of work, you can use my referral codes for one free stock from Robinhood, two free stocks from Webull, $10 worth of Bitcoin from BlockFi, and lastly, $5 free cash from the Cash App. If you sign up for that, in addition, I will give you $2 worth of Apple stocks. Great deal. Dividend paying stocks. You can find all the referral codes, links, and instructions in the description down below. If you want to see more finance by design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers.